this is the hot mic on newsx i'm megha sharma we are at the bjp parliamentary office here in coimbatore joining me on the telecast is a very special guest k anamalai he is uh, touted to be the blue eyed boy of prime minister narendra modi so i have to understand from you why are people so crazy about you there was uh, i was speaking to women i was speaking to young children i was speaking to elderly they all have so much love for you and suddenly annamalai has become a phenomenon not just in coimbatore but across the country oh no no madam i am very normal person i am not a politician uh, let let me put it like that i am 3 years into politics but i am not a full time politician i do things my own way I was a cop for some time even now i call myself a farmer first i do active farming i run a foundation and uh, because of the responsibility i have now the state president of bjp it, it has become a full time now literally so maybe people like that that uh, i'm very different maybe i'm very original and many times i get into controversy also but that's the way i am starting like you spoke about how you have been a cop you were serving in bengaluru south uh, you are a farmer is what you talked to me about you are also very educated because you studied at the iim which is uh, an excellent the best of the long, best long time back then yes best of back. the best management institutes in our country you studied engineering here in coimbatore so why this sudden shift from uh, being a technocrat being uh, a management uh, student being a cop and then getting into politics i know it's very unlikely path uh, normally people don't uh, usually choose this path you are a professional maybe you did mba from one of the best institutes then you are a cop for some time but for me madam i come from a small village um, no clarity till 12 standard if you ask me as a 12 standard boy what do you want to do in life i would have said i want to study computer science i don't want to study medicine because it's tough for me that, that is the kind of maturity i had so tech engineering that is the kind of exact mindset i had engineering first time a village boy coming to an urban city like coimbatore it opened my mind it made me to see people around made me to travel very little travel i've done mm. my dad and mom still they are farmers uh, both have done elementary education 10th standard 6th standard and uh, they put lot of heart and soul to raise me as a better child and they valued my education and uh, they took lot of effort to get my principles right uh, very strict with me but that is the best education they could give me but college gave me an opening and i uh, a window to the world but one thing i was clear third year into my engineering is i don't want to be an engineer then what to do hmm. and uh, many people might not know i took a break from engineering i finished my engineering took a break for a year what what they call the break year again in coimbatore but trying to explore uh, whether i should get into an ngo whether i should do an mba or i should get into masters of social program something like that but the inclination was towards a people's field but i was not sure what to do then mba happened um i am lucknow happened first time into north india first time in uttar pradesh uh it it gave me a very different perspective of our country a very conservative guy like me in tamil nadu um uh, uh, the society itself is very traditional and our society is very different mm. uh, a village society in tamil nadu is very different from village society in up so that gave me an idea okay there are issues there are problems first time i saw poverty at its worst especially in the purvanchal side when i used to do projects i'm talking of 2007 2008 mm. and uh, that gave me some idea that i should get to a field where i should put my talents to better use some human being should benefit from whatever god given talent i have so that shift took me here took me into civil service 9 years policing and uh, i was still in the policing i was searching because policing the only problem is the more higher you go you get cut off from the real world uh, asp was fantastic sp was great hmm. i was just getting my sp tenure it was getting over so bangalore dcp was an important posting but i felt it was more very protocol oriented and uh, i am not that village asp sit in the police station and do something or a udp sp or a chikmagalur sp i felt i am getting into fancy offices getting to meet very good people but i am not i am not meeting the people whose problem i have to solve so that kept me thinking for long because sorry i am giving you a long and long answer and uh, no please I, carry on because it's fascinating i i don't think there would be a person with a profile such as yours in education and the work uh, experience that you've had 
to have gotten a completely 360 degree turn around and getting into politics. Yeah, thank you, madam. Then what happened? Policing nine years, enjoyed it, had a good name, good career, built up a reputation. People know me as a no nonsense cop, but it's very painful to quit. And uh, quitting a thing you love is not that easy, but I was very clear, clear that I have to take this tough decision with me because I have to move to a different trajectory of my life. Mm. And the different trajectory is again in the grassroots, which the policing is slightly taking me upwards, more protocol oriented. Then I started a foundation, uh, We the Leaders Foundation, ran it for a year. We operate in the villages in the Kongu region, uh, organic farming, skilling, all those things. But problem in our Indian society is, you are like this profile, you quit, you come back to village, people don't keep quiet. There will be somebody who will ask, politics is a better option. Mm. What are you doing here? You do this, do politics also. Politics gives you that scope and canvas. I am a guy, strictly speaking, in, in one of the book I've written also, I mentioned that I hated politics for a long time because the policemen and the politicians, we are always on the opposite ends of the spectrum. They'll ask you to do something which you refuse. Mm. Half the time it is like conflict with the law, you try to balance and all the things like that. But Modi happened. Since Modi is there, I had the courage, a common man, like me, once you become an IPS officer, you can't call yourself a common man. But, but the spirit, the mindset, the way I was living my life was was still a common man lifestyle. Lifestyle. Since Modi ji was there, I felt I can't consider politics as an option. Since Modi ji is there, I felt I can consider politics in Tamil Nadu, my home state, where I was born, raised, lived for a long time. Then joined BJP Tamil Nadu. Hmm. So here I'm in front of you, full time, running, doing. Fighting. <laughs> so, would you say that uh, the leadership skills were always inborn in you since the time you were a child? I don't know, madam. Uh, being in a village, it teaches you real time problem solving skills. And uh, you're not textbook oriented. You try and solve problems by figuring out a solution yourself. Mm -hmm. So, I'm always that kind of guy. You me, give me something, I'll figure out a solution. Even in college, uh, people used to tell me, okay. Complicated problem, call an like Unsolvable, call him. We'll find a way to solve. But my method is always not the traditional one. So that is because of the upbringing you have. Uh, maybe leadership skill, I, I, I would not rate myself as a very traditional leader. I'm more a people's leader. You put me in a team of 50, you put me in a team of 100. My thing is more heart to heart. I connect to people heart to heart. That is my thing. I sit down, I take time, talk to them. I understand them as a person. I don't, I don't do anything very fleetingly. Hmm. So, once I understand that person, heart to heart connection happens, then truly I get down to the ground. That is my nature. Though it might take time for me, uh, uh, I take a lot of time talking to people individually, call them to the room, sit with them, try and understand what is the problem. Even policing was like that. So, I am more like a people's leader hmm. and more very emotional and more heart to heart and uh, not very uh, table oriented, designation oriented kind of leader. I think, I think that's the emotional quotient that has struck with the people as well because as I was communicating today during your rally on the streets, uh, they were like, uh, you come across as somebody who's very kind, uh, who, who's somebody who's very ethical, somebody who listens to people, who's somebody who's ready to solve their problems, somebody who they can look up to as a leader to bring about change. So, another question pops in my mind is why the BJP and why Narendra Modi? I don't know, recently, so social media, that one image, one video popped up. Whereas an IPS officer, I was asking a question to Narendra Modi ji. Hmm. 2000, uh, 2012, training. Modi ji is CM of Gujarat. And uh, we were going to Gujarat for some training. Uh, Jagannath Yatra in Ahmedabad. So the CM was kind enough, Modi ji then was kind enough to give us some lunch. And he was interacting with all the professionals. I find it totally funny that video just popped up 12 years later mm. and I was just asked, seeing what question I was asking to Modi ji then. I was wearing a uniform all like this and moustache and I was asking Modi ji that, uh, Modi ji, what books you like? First thing I asked him and second thing also I asked Modi ji in that uh, thing if I, which I saw it recently is, I was asking Modi ji exactly about leadership. Mm. How do you manage? How do you deal? How do you deliver? Those kind of questions. Then 12 years later, now, sitting next to Modi ji and trying to learn from him, it's more like a karmic cycle. I don't know, madam. Why Modi ji, I really don't have an answer. 
since it is modi ji and the courage to come to politics because it is impossible for an outsider to survive in politics more so in tamil nadu politics it is impossible it is literally impossible the system is not built for a first time uh, a guy without a political background a guy without money power it is impossible to survive because people people the old timers will finish you off in a matter of time it is modi ji youngsters like us give get a chance and it is modi ji youngsters like us get a chance to speak it is very important politics you are open and it is like because of modi ji youngsters like me get accepted this is very important all of us come with rough edges it is not that i am a finished product mm-hmm. and we are work in progress kind of people and we make mistakes and uh, many a times it is like gentle prodding gentle nudge a gentle advice here and there so that try and shape you to a better person so i don't think any other leader in our country right now would be giving this much opportunity to youngsters anil antony i think i i saw your interview just finished an interview with him there you take tejasvi surya you take me or some somebody in tamil nadu or many people across the country and this party is aggressively promoting young leaders because it is very clear the next level of leader should come be connected to the grassroots be with the people you tell me one political party in india which is doing it madam mm. but very clearly why modi ji i think it's a karmic connection because that video popped up now i never knew i asked a question i, I maybe i forgot it also yeah i was going to ask you do, do you remember you interacting with him and 12 I, years ago i i remember <laughs> interacting i exactly never remembered what question i asked mm. nothing i remember but but when the video popped up i was very surprised that i was asking modi ji what books you read and how do you manage and everything so i don't know madam is very special person and, okay uh, very okay. emotional modi ji very heart to heart modi ji <laughs> very very different modi ji talking about the politics of south uh, bjp has been in power under prime minister narendra modi for 10 years and it has uh, been mostly because of the votes and seats that they have been winning in the northern part of the country or the central part of the country in certain western parts of the country and northeast as well it came together and majority of the seats now are with the bjp or the nda alliance uh, what is the peculiarity of south india that it has still been a difficulty a challenge for the bjp to penetrate i can't speak for other, other states madam but i can speak definitely for tamil nadu because bjp came very late to tamil nadu uh, jansang the earlier jansang was not as strong as jansang of other parts of our country because dravidian movement was very strong and 1980 when bjp formed as a party and uh, even our first mla velu aidam in 1996 uh, he contested in some other symbol he became an mla so if you look at the politics of tamil nadu per se bjp came into the state very late mm. so vajpayee ji time first level of growth we saw and modi ji's time the second level of growth we are seeing only two spots by the time the dravidian parties dmk was in power four times admk was in power three times by the time they had a head start they had very tall leaders more grassroots oriented and people are trusting the leaders here more than the ideology and if you ask me difference between admk and dmk there is no difference but for people for 40 years they gave one chance here one chance there just because they like the leadership of of both the parties mm. one chance for you one chance for that yeah so tamil nadu that way is very peculiar because you see both the parties are exactly similar nothing much differentiates with respect to ideology both will oppose three language formula both will oppose hindi both will oppose this both will oppose that but admk will say i am anti dmk dmk will say i am anti dmk it's a very peculiar politics for a long time now after modi ji has come what happened two things happen and generally tamil nadu the fear of an outsider is built for a long time the moment somebody is an outsider the politicians here smartly make them a villain they make him a villain anything they say out of context they flip it they say look 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 is anti tamil they, they 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 build that sustained pressure for a year magazines stage speeches grassroots speeches they make all great leaders of north as villain because they are an outsider and modi ji is the first person to successfully break it mm. first person to successfully break it uh it's very very tough for, for a person not born in tamil nadu to get accepted in a rural tamil nadu impossible yeah. because people people because for you the language itself is a barrier if modi ji speaks hindi you get connected to 80% of india straight away but ours is a state where you have a language barrier then leaders are outsiders then the caste angle comes this is a hardcore obc state where we have the highest amount of reservation 69% mm. an anti brahmin narrative is built from 1970 1920 onwards so in that context any north indian leader fits is finished so modi ji broke everything how 
only by connecting to people heart to heart. And when people say, oh, Modi ji is doing Kashi Tamil Sangamam just because he wants votes. No. Modi ji is doing Kashi Tamil Sangamam because he connected heart to heart with Tamil people. Saurashtra Tamil Sangamam. Sengol in parliament. Modi ji talking about Tirukural. Modi ji taking Tamil language to the globe. And Modi ji visits. Even as Anishtanam, two days spending in Tamil Nadu. Mm. And uh, highlighting Monkey Bath, normal Tamil Nadu. So, it took him that much effort. Over 10 years, sustained effort. Without giving up. Simply not giving up. 10 years consistent effort, it made the Tamil people to say, oh, he's our, our person. That's why the speech... Think, do you think now the change is palpable on the ground? Because I still feel, because, uh, you know, when we talk about India, there has always been a North-South divide. Because of the language, because of the culture, because of uh, how the people think and perceive things. And talking about perhaps higher... Literacy rate in the southern part of the country versus when we spoke about the Bimaru states, which is the UP, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan. So, there is a different way of politics that politicians, that leaders of our country have to play to reach out to the people that they are reaching out to, whether it is in the northeast or you talk about south. I mean, there is peculiarity and therefore you will have to adapt to the changes and then bring about politics that works that then bring about policies that work for the people of that particular place. I take your point ma'am, I am going to flip your argument entirely on its head. I take your argument on face value because that's a very right perspective. Uh, ma'am, if, if, if you take 1960s, uh, 1963, 62, I am going then, the south was much more, much more index, index wise when compared to north, it was slightly more ahead of north. Hmm be it the per capita income if you take it or be it the health index because it was still better. That is the time the southern politic politicians dominated the Congress. There was a Kamaraja, yes. there was a Nijalingappa from Mysore and somebody from Tamil Nadu. They dominated the Congress politics and without speaking a word of Hindi, hmm. very very different India then. Without speaking a word of Hindi, politicians from south were dominating the Congress, Kamaraja plan, K plan. So, India it has happened that at a certain point of time, the politics was not North-South. We have to understand 1965, when Congress imposed Hindi, that is when they lost it out. First time when they said officially you have to start learning Hindi, the Hindi Sabhas will come. When it was made slightly more forceful, then DMK made a big agitation, people mm. uh, uh, self humiliated themselves, people got killed. The first time, the real emotion against North India started only during the Hindi agitation, 1965. But before 1965, different India. Kamarajarji had to lose his seat. Mm. A stalwart from Tamil Nadu who was dominating Congress political party, who was deciding the president and prime minister of the country at one point of time without speaking a single word of Hindi, only by because of his charisma and ramrod honesty, he lost the 1967 elections in Tamil Nadu simply because of the Hindi agitation. Then the argument got flipped. Then the politicians understood very smartly. For us to become a regional party and winning, you got to make North Indian parties, regional parties as North, national parties as North Indian parties. The regional parties made this bogey over a point of time. Any national party is a North Indian party. Hmm. So they created this argument for a long time stating that regional parties having sons of soil as leaders, we represent your interests better. That's the second shift that happened. Uh, it's a very, very well calibrated thought out strategy. Everybody played. And BJP and Congress were able to break this in Karnataka. Karnataka, they were able to break it because the regional parties were not able to become too big. Because the, yeah. the leaders were big stalwarts there. They made sure they didn't become too big. But in a state like Tamil Nadu, Congress just collapsed. You'll be very surprised, ma'am. Why Congress collapsed? It is only because of Madam Indira Gandhi. Madam Indira Gandhi, for her own survival, she collapsed the Tamil Nadu Congress because she felt... Karma Veerar Kamaraj Raya is a threat to her. So just for selfish reason, it's a record I'm saying. One parliament election, when the assembly elections and parliament elections in the early part of 1970s, you'll be very surprised. Indira Gandhi, madam, told DMK, you don't give any seats to Congress in the legislative assembly. Hmm. But we'll be in alliance. But I will take more seats in Lok Sabha. So that day, Congress is finished. You cannot have a national party in Tamil Nadu not contesting assembly election. So, very perspective, if you go very deep into southern Tamil Nadu politics, if you analyze it very carefully, yeah. where that shift happened? We lost it out, BJP was not there, BJP came late and BJP was supported as a Brahmin party, Hindi speaking party, BJP was this, that and Baniya party and everything. And that 
Vajpayee ji came to break the first set of narratives. He broke the first set of narratives because Pokhran bomb blast. Mm. You should have seen the kind of resurgence in Tamil Nadu. I remember as a school boy, all of us contributing money uh, during the Kargil attack, all of us standing in the road when one of our dead soldiers' body came in. So that was an unforgettable moment for us because Vajpayee ji probably was the first North Indian politician after a long time able to break this in Tamil Nadu. Then again, 10 years it went back. Then Modi ji has made it. So, point I'm trying to make, madam, it is not a very, very generalized perspective that this has happened. It has happened because of a combination of stupidity, political arrogance, somebody's uh, 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 abuse of power. Hmm. Karnataka, why it happened? Karnataka, Rajiv Gandhi ji just dismissed the sitting chief minister. He was in the Bangalore airport. They asked him, are you a chief minister, are you removing? By the time the plane landed in Delhi, one Karnataka chief minister gone. En mass, the community shifted to other political party. It's a story. It is Congress that finished off the national parties, not only itself, but also BJP in the southern states for a long time. You cannot have okay. a party like Congress. 91 times used 356. Hmm. Indira Gandhi alone, Madam alone used 51 times. Multiple hmm. times against southern states. Then where will the southern states get that confidence that you as a prime minister will take care of me? Hmm. Now, first time the healing touch is happening. Hmm. First time the healing touch is happening. You wanted a leader, a statesman, to go over and do this healing touch. And every year, what is the problem? There is this Hindi, Hindi Divas Day. Hindi Divas Day. And Hindi Divas Day is always a controversy in Tamil Nadu. I was coming to that because there is, when we talk about the RSS and we talk about the BJP, there is a way, as you said, there are regional parties down south. They twist and turn things according to their benefits. How do you shed that? tag for the BJP, for the RSS, that they are Hindutva, they are pro-Hindus and they are going to destroy everything that is non-Hindu in Tamil Nadu. Although, of course, the largest populations in the Southern Belt are also Hindus. But keeping in mind, when we talk about, like you said, the Hindi Darvis Day and it had become a major political controversy. We're talking about how the names on the placards and the boards of shops had to be had to had Hindi and then obviously there's an entire row that happened in Karnataka and in Tamil Nadu and other parts of the southern states southern states as well. Uh, we talk about the Ram Mandir. They, 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 they are talking to people and telling them that if you end up voting for the BJP, this is exactly what is going to happen in Tamil Nadu. This is exactly what is going to happen in Kerala. So, one, they talk about how because they are the Dravidan parties, they are non-communal. Uh, they cater to all, that the Hindus, the Muslims, the Christians, everybody is living together in peace and harmony in their regions, in their states. And if the BJP were to come into being, it is going to destroy it all because of it being quote-unquote communal. The latest example being the Citizenship Amendment Act, the NRC, they are speaking about how it is quote-unquote anti-Muslims, how it is a proposal to throw Muslims out of the country. How do you how do you shed this fear psychosis amongst the people, especially those, especially those who, who are not educated enough, who go on hearsay, who have been voting for these same parties again and again and again for decades together? Uh, okay, long question, but it also deserves a longer answer. Madam, the only option you do this is, you should allow leaders to grow at the grassroots. In the national party, the biggest problem is lack of strong regional leaders. But thanks to Modi ji, thanks to BJP, compared to Congress, as a national party, BJP has, has taken a different path to say, BJP is a sum total of collection of states. Mm. So you will see regional leadership across, because nobody is a threat to anybody. In Congress, they see, oh, you are growing from south, you are growing from west, you will be a threat to Rahul Gandhi. Just cut him off, finish him off. But here it is not the case. You should allow Leaders to nurture because what happens? Leadership is the cushion. Even a policy decision, even an act, or even a statement goes wrong sometimes because it's a government. Some bureaucrat will say something. For example, here, every time the Tamil Nadu politicians will jump like catters, some LIC bureaucrat will write a letter. Please make Hindi compulsory in all LIC office. Immediately, one communist MP will take this and bring. See, see, they're imposing Hindi. So many a time, the leaders, we are the first line of defense. And people judge many things through us. Mm. Who are you as a person? What is your moral value? What is the ideology that you are preaching, you are talking, you are walking? So based on this, people form an impression. So the only option is 
create strong grassroots leaders, allow them to grow, nurture them. It might take three years, four years, five years. So this time, exactly that is what we are doing. The logic of BJP standing alone. BJP cannot be in a Dravidian party's shadow. You cannot contest five seats where the Dravidian party's ideology will overshadow you. I am again repeating, madam. When you contest five seats out of 39, which is what? 12 percent. Or you contest 20 seats out of 234, which is 8 percent, like we contested in 2021. The ideology of ADMK overshadows what BJP is. So it's a very yeah, conscious call taken by our leaders. Okay, fine. Let us stand alone. Mm -hmm. Let us make 19 MP candidates now. Let us make four people to stand in BJP symbol. Let we stand in 23 out of 39. So that this way, you, elections are the best time to reach out to people, madam. Elections are the most intensive time where ideology goes to the grassroots. The debate happens. Discussion happens. People will say oh, Lotus. Somebody will say oh, Lotus is bad. Somebody will say oh, Lotus is great. I will say uh, DMK is bad. Somebody will say DMK is great. This is the churning that happens naturally. A party has to contest election. What did Amit Shah Ji do? Man? How did he revive the Moriban BJP in Uttar Pradesh? The first thing he did is, he said you will contest Panjait elections. Hmm. The first thing he made BJP UP to do is contest local body elections. Because that many seats, you are creating a local leader. And the local leader is the first line of defense. Something goes bad, Mayavadi Madam is there, or Achilles Ji is there. They will make a negative narrative against BJP. They will take care because he is a local leader who has stood for election, got 200 votes. Mm. The guy will come to his home at 6 o'clock in the morning and say, why, what is this? They are taking like this, what is your opinion? So BJP has taken the first step telling people of Tamil Nadu, look, we are ready to govern. Madam, when, when, you, when you tell people you are ready to govern, it requires a different mindset. You cannot contest in five seats and say I am ready to govern. You cannot contest in 20 out of 234 states to say you are ready to govern. First time we are saying we are ready to govern, which means we are ready to pass the litmus test. Mm. You give us test, we are willing to pass it. It's a long journey. I'm not saying tomorrow morning it is going to happen. I keep telling everybody it's a 10-year journey. But this 10-year journey has to start somewhere. And for us, it started in the local body elections in 2021 when we stood alone. So we had 14,000 candidates contesting across Tamil Nadu. First time the booth reads, first time the flag is somewhere, first time in a colony road, one BJP person, first time they knew, oh, you are BJP. That's the first step for a national party to come. So right now, because of Modiji and our strong leadership in Delhi, they're giving us this freedom to do it. Because though it's a baby step, it's an important step. In a place like Coimbatore, in a place like Kanyakumari, right now you see uh, young uh, candidate like Karthiyani and Chidambaram or in Chennai, all three seats we are contesting for the first time ever. Mm. North yes. Chennai, Middle Chennai, South Chennai. So what it will do, madam, we are creating this many leaders. So there are 19 leaders in the public eye. Then 2026 20, assembly elections, if you contest 200, 150, 180, 200 seats, you are creating that many leaders. That is the best way for a party to grow. You cannot have a shortcut mechanism for a party. It's it's sweat. We just finished an yatra, eight months, grueling yatra, most grueling yatra. Mm. But I convinced my party people, convinced the leaders, I said, we have to do it. And let us all, let us all put ourselves under the pump. Be it a hot set, let us walk. Let us reach. Immediately don't expect Yatra to give result. Because Yatra will help the body for party for a foundation. Mm. With that foundation, one jump Lok Sabha. Assembly, second jump. Tenth year, we should be in power. If God is kind, fifth year, we are coming to power, fantastic. But as a team, a BJP Tamil Nadu team, all of us are convinced. Let us do that hard work. Let us create hundreds of leaders. First okay. day when I became BJP president, a press was interviewing me. What is your goal as BJP president? I said, my goal is very simple. When I leave this chair, I should have created 500 leaders worthy of their names. Once I have done it, my job is over. I will go and do some other work in my country. But moment the 500 names in my state is worthy of their name. These guys are the first line of defense. Mm. Nobody can write bad about the party. Nobody can build a negative image about the party. Nobody can stereotype my party. But till I don't do it, it's a five leader party, it's a seven leader party, it's a ten leader party. The same leaders will keep contesting elections every time. The party cannot grow better. Okay. And okay. you've got to get your social engineering right. For a party in Indian politics, you have to understand it's a caste dominated country. Hmm. I'm not saying caste is superior. I'm, I'm saying get your social engineering right. The people who come to the TV channel, the people who speak, the people who represent, the people who are in the public. So you have to represent every class of people be it an economic class, be it a social base, you got to get that engineering right. And everybody should get an opportunity. And mm. we cannot say, oh, this guy is famous, I'm not going to give opportunity. You should give 
somebody from a community an opportunity because unless you give an opportunity, the community will always feel it's slighted. So this time if you look at our, our 39 seats, if you analyze it very carefully, we have got our social engineering right. Okay. If you look at all the seats, who's contesting TT Vidhanakaran in Teniji, OPS is contesting in Ramanadapuram, AC Sanmugam ji in Vellur, Parivendar ji is contesting in Perambalur, mm. John Pandian ji contesting in Tenkasi, Devanadhan Yadav contesting in Devanadhan Yadav ji contesting in Shivagangai. So this is the first message you are giving to the people of Tamil Nadu. Look, we are here to take care of you. Your interests are being represented. But this political party is caste neutral. The okay. combination of political party is religion neutral. But the okay. political party have to have caste inside. Until you get that social engineering right. And somebody will always feel slighted. Tamil Nadu is a very complex place to do politics. Mm. You got to, because people like stalwarts like Karnanadi has done politics here. Yeah. And to beat them, you got to be better than them. Okay. Okay. On a lighter note, uh, where does all the energy come to you? Because you have been campaigning, I don't know, for months together now, non-stop, without much sleep, without much food. So, how do you keep going on? What keeps, what keeps you motivated? It's one line answer, madam. Uh, it's coming straight from the heart. For me, Modi ji, every single day is sitting in uh, his chair as Prime Minister. It's a bonus for the country. It's a bonus for the country. Mm -hmm. And my job as a karyakarta is to make Modi ji to sit in the chair as long as possible. It's a very simple, straightforward answer. I will give my life. I want Modi ji to sit in the chair extra for some more time. I don't see... If I keep my eye like this, I don't see another Modi for a long time. He is very special. And the country has to preserve him, keep him, make him to sit in the chair for a long, long time. Get all our problems started. Interlinking of rivers, we have still another 10, 15 uh, big issues to sort it out. One country, one elections issues, we have big issues to sort out. Then we have a lot of other issues. So the best time is Modi ji should be there to sort it out. Who better than Modi to sort out, sort out all this? Because... People in Tamil Nadu should accept a leader who can sort it out. And right now they, they, they think whatever Modi ji does, it is good for the country. It took us 10 years to reach here. Hmm. Where, where any, any village person in Tamil Nadu, my brother or sister will say, oh, since Modi ji has done, it will be correct. And Modi ji will have something in mind to do it. Hmm. Madam, that is important in politics. Because every, every decision you make as a leader, in media, the media is so smart. They can completely say it is wrong. The other media can completely say it is right. Okay. And media can go any which way. Because many medias have become ideologically biased now. I'm not saying that's the way they are. So you can set a narrative, any decision is wrong or right. Just because somebody has got a media, writing power and everything. But if this leader transcends it, if the leader is able to give a confidence look, please trust me. Demonetization, trust me. Hmm. We will get it right. GST, trust me, we will get it right. Don't worry. I am asking you to do a hard lockdown. Hmm. People should not second guess. Oh, why Modi ji doing lockdown for 45 days? Why not 12 days? Just like Americans, they said. If Trump is saying lockdown, the citizens will ask Trump, who the hell are you to make us to go lockdown? But in India, 140 crore people accepted. They said, since Modi ji is saying, there is some logic to it. Madam, it's very rare in a democracy. Very rare in a democracy, in a complex country like India, where a leader is just accepted because people at the grassroots think, oh, he cannot do any wrong. Hmm. Now, that is why I am saying nobody. Of course, they are great leaders, madam. Of course, they are fantastic leaders within the party. But to get that confidence in the public to say, when Modi ji says, he means it with intent from his heart. So, for me, as a karyakata, it is very important. Every day, he sits in the chair extra as a bonus. Okay. Because my son and daughter will live in a better country. So, so energy how, is always okay, there. To yeah. So, so, how does the BJP move ahead? Uh, will Modi legacy still be behind after... He retires. Why do you want to talk about retirement? Roger Federer prayed for a long time and uh, long, long time, much beyond what people thought is possible in realistically in a tennis physical shape. And Sachin played for a long time. So, Modiji will beat what people perceive the age of a politician to be. People say, oh, after this age, it's tough. I think Modiji will break that also. Because at 73, Modiji now, he has got a 40-year-old energy. He climbs a plane. Have you seen him holding a rail anytime? Madam? Just goes, tack, tack, very smooth, like a deer he goes. I enjoy watching him climbing a plane. Because I'll be standing there to receive him. I enjoy Modiji walking. I have a pride I'll be watching him. Because he takes care of his fitness. He knows what to eat. He knows how to rest. He knows exactly how to take care of his fitness. So Modiji will go a long, long, long time. Maybe after 10 years when you sit down again, madam, 
this question is a time for then now. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Anamalai, for thank joining you. me. Thank you for coming all the way, madam. Speaking with us and wishing you all the very best. Thank you, madam. Thank the you. The results, of course, on thank June you, 4th. We'll all be eyeing this. Thank you, madam. Very thank kind you. of you. Thank you. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.